If you're planning to come to Bangkok, you're probably thinking about where to stay. Bangkok is a huge city with a wide range of different neighborhoods, and each neighborhood will provide a unique experience of this city. Choosing the right neighborhood will depend on your personal preferences, your budget, and what you want out of your stay in this city. I'm Cal, and I've been living in this city for eight years. In this video, I'm going to provide you with a comprehensive review of 10 Bangkok neighborhoods in order to help you choose the best location for your stay. Whether you're planning a short visit or a permanent move, this video is for you. For each neighborhood, we'll discuss the main attractions, access to transportation, shopping, food, nightlife, and accommodation costs. Let's get started with a personal favorite of mine and one of the best areas to stay if you're a newcomer to the city. Lower Sukhumvit. Centered around Asok at Sukhumvit 21, Lower Sukhumvit Sukhumvit is the main downtown area in Bangkok. I actually lived at the condo right behind me for two years, and one of the main reasons that I stayed in this neighborhood was the excellent access to transportation. With consistent traffic congestion in the city, access to the public train system is very important in Bangkok. Here at Asok, you have access to both the BTS SkyTrain and the MRT Metro, which together cover most of Bangkok. The MRT runs south to the beautiful Lumpini Park, Chinatown, and the historic old city with the Grand Palace and Wat Po. Hop on a northbound train and you can easily check out the popular Jod Fair Night Market and Chattachuk Park and Weekend Market. Or you can take the BTS Skytrain west into central Siam for some shopping. Or head east and check out the Bohemian Cafes and popular Sky Bars in Tonglor. And when you leave Bangkok, you can easily connect to the airport rail link which will take you to the international airport at Suwanapum. But this area isn't only a transportation hub. This is also a hub for shopping, dining, and nightlife. If you want to do some shopping, you can check out the Terminal 21 Mall, which is beautifully designed with each floor representing a different city. And you have no shortage of food options with all the restaurants. My personal favorite spot to stop for a quick bite is at the Terminal 21 Food Court, where you you'll find excellent and inexpensive Thai food. The vendors don't actually pay rent, so you'll find some of the cheapest prices in the city here. But you don't need to confine yourself to the malls to enjoy Sukhumvit. This is a great area to wander around and sample food at the many restaurants, shops, and street vendors. <laughs> Within a short walking distance to the west, you'll find the Nana area. Known as the Arab District, this has been one of my go-to Sunday lunch spots for years. Or you could venture to one of the many beautiful parks in the neighborhood. To the south, you'll find Benjakiti Park and the beautifully designed adjacent Benjakiti Forest Park, perfect for a workout or a sunset stroll. Or you can take a short walk over to the Prompong area where you'll find Benjasiri Park with a fully kitted outdoor gym. And here at Prompong, you'll discover the M Space, which is a collection of three malls, Emporium, M Courtier, and the newest M Sphere. If you couldn't find what you're looking for at Terminal 21, you'll find it here. This is an enormous area with beautifully designed mixed indoor and outdoor spaces. For a night out, Sukhumvit Soy 11 is one of the most popular nightlife areas in the city. And you'll also find find the red light districts at Nana Plaza and Soy Cowboy. If you're in town on the third weekend of any month, you can also check out one of Bangkok's famous pool parties at the Westin Hotel across from Terminal 21. And of course, you'll need a place to sleep. You can find five-star hotels from around 3,000 to 8,000 baht per night, while three and four-star hotels will cost between 1,000 and 3,000 baht. Lower Sukhumvit is a great neighborhood if you're a newcomer to the city, but if you're looking for somewhere that's a little bit less mall dominated and a little bit more authentic, you might be interested in our next neighborhood. So let's jump on the BTS and go check it out.
welcome to Tong Lor at Sukhumvit 55, where you'll find a much more authentic Thai experience, as well as some of the most Instagrammable cafes and restaurants in this city. Considered middle Sukhumvit, this is one of the trendiest neighborhoods in Bangkok. It's also home to a very large Japanese expat community, and if you're a fan of Japanese food and culture, this is definitely the neighborhood for you. And for general shopping, there are also several smaller malls and the large shopping center of M Space is only one BTS stop away. Tonglor is especially famous for its nightlife. This area has plenty of nightlife for you to explore. I'm at a cool little underpass area here at the north end of Tonglor and behind me you have one of the most popular live music venues. This is Speaker Box. You can check it out any night of the week. You'll find a different genre of music on offer. If you're looking for a hotel, five-star hotels can be as cheap as 1,500 baht. For visitors to the city, the main downside to staying in Tonglor is that you lose direct access to the MRT Metro, which provides the easiest access to many of the main tourist attractions. I'm here at one of Bangkok's famous canals, the Klongs. These are great great for a jog, great for a walk, and they're a great form of transportation. We're gonna jump on a canal ferry and head in to our next destination. Welcome to Siam. This is central Bangkok. And if you're looking to shop until you drop, this is the neighborhood for you. This is mall heaven. This area is home to two of the 10 largest malls in the world. You have Central World, which is 4.62 million square feet. And in case that wasn't enough mall for you, you have Siam Paragon at 3.22 million square feet, located right next door. And immediately Immediately across from Siam Paragon, you can check out Siam Center. But if you're looking for inexpensive shopping, you might want to take a little walk into the Platinum area and check out the large indoor street markets at Platinum Mall and MBK. When it comes to shopping, you can find nearly anything that you want in Siam. Just remember one thing, if you're planning to shop during your stay in Bangkok, there is a no return policy in Thailand. If you're looking to relax, in the Siam area, you can also hang out in one of the many public pavilions around the malls. You'll find different events on offer almost every week. When it comes to food, Siam has beautiful outdoor market areas as well as plenty of great restaurants including more impressive food courts. The Central World Food Court is excellent and one of my favorites in the city. In terms of transportation, Siam has easy access to the BTS SkyTrain. And Siam is an interchange station, so you'll be able to travel south into Satorn and Tonbury from here. And for nightlife, you can check out the Red Sky Bar at Santara, or you can stop in at Groove, which is a popular nightlife area inside Central World Mall. If you want to stay in Siam, you can find five-star hotels that offer great value. You'll also find a wide range of three- and four-star hotels. With the stunning mall and pavilions. Siam is definitely one of the most beautiful neighborhoods in this city, but it's also very commercial. So we're going to go explore an area that's a little bit more authentic, a little bit less commercial. Let's hop on the BTS and go check it out. in Chongnanzi. This is the heart of the Silom Satorn neighborhood. This is the central business district here in Bangkok. 
and one of the oldest neighborhoods in this city, it might be perfect for you. Like Sukhumvit, Satorn is a major transportation hub with direct access to the BTS and MRT. You can access all the main tourist sites with the MRT, while you have access to the shorter Siloam BTS line, which runs from the Siam area southwest across the Chow Praia River into Tonbury, where you'll find the popular Icon Siam Mall. Siloam has plenty of attractions. You can go for a walk in beautiful Lumpini Park, check out the observation deck at Bangkok's tallest building, the King Power Mahanakon, or explore the stunning views at one of the many rooftop bars. And you can explore the various religious sites in this historic neighborhood. And of course, you'll find plenty of food along the way. This neighborhood is home to international dining experiences, or for a more authentic experience, you can go food exploring along Cheron Krung Road. This was Bangkok's first asphalt paved road, and it's home to many long standing traditional Thai restaurants. For shopping, you have the Siloam Complex and Robinson's Department store. One of my personal favorite spots is Jack's Bar, located at the end of a pier with beautiful views of the Chow Praia River. But when it comes to nightlife, Siloam is famous as Bangkok's LGBTQ plus district, which is based around Soy 2 and 4. For accommodation, you can stay at a 5 star hotel for as little as 4,000 baht, or 4 star hotels for between 1,000 and 1,500 baht. The Siloam and Satorn neighborhood definitely has a lot to offer, and this is another good choice if you're a newcomer to this city. But if you're looking for something a little bit quieter, a little bit more relaxed, you might want to check out our next location. We're going to hop back on the BTS. at Sapan Taxin BTS and this is also Satorn Pier. You can jump on a ferry here, but we're going to go explore our next area. This is the luxurious Riverside neighborhood. We're going to climb some steps. Let's go. We made it up the steps. Tonbury over there to the west. To the east, we have Satorn. Behind me is the Chow Praia River. The luxurious riverside is the perfect place for a romantic and relaxing holiday in Bangkok. Hotels along the river offer scenic views of the Chow Praia and easy access to all the main tourist attractions by river ferry, including Asiatic, Icon Siam, Chinatown, the Grand Palace, Wat Arun, and Khao San Road. If you feel like exploring more of the city, you can access the BTS at the nearby Sapan Taxin or Krung Tonbury BTS stations. The area is also connected to the Siloam Satorn neighborhood, which we just covered, so you have lots of options for an easy day or night out, and avoids all the hustle and bustle that is typical of Bangkok's busy traffic. Five star hotels can cost 4,000 baht per night. You can find four star hotels for as little as 1,000 baht. you liked all the relaxing vibes of the Riverside neighborhood, but maybe you don't want to spend as much money and maybe you want a more authentic experience, you can choose to stay here in Tonbury. I actually lived in this neighborhood for three years when I first moved to Thailand back in 2015. Tonbury actually predates Bangkok as the area served as the capital of Siam between 1767 and 1782 when Bangkok was founded. The areas are lined with food vendors and small restaurants serving up every Thai dish that you can think of. I always loved sitting by the street eating at a small local clay pot restaurant near my condo. And unlike much of Bangkok, this area isn't particularly busy. And you can comfortably walk around on the sidewalks. And the lack of tourism in this neighborhood adds authenticity to the interactions, very representative of the genuinely friendly and 
welcoming attitude of Thai people. If you're looking for a little bit of nightlife, there are plenty of Thai style bars and music venues. And the massive Icon Siam shopping area is within a short walking distance. For accommodations, you'll find plenty of inexpensive options. For transportation, the Tonbury neighborhood is connected to the Siloam line of the BTS, which runs north to Siam. The gold line will take you to Icon Siam, where you'll also find the river ferry. The Tonbury and Riverside neighborhoods are a great place to stay if you're looking for a quiet and relaxed holiday. But if you're looking to explore the food culture, the street culture here in Bangkok, you might want to stay in our next location, and we're going to hop on a river River Ferry to go check it out. We arrived at Ratchawang Pier. This is the historic Chinatown neighborhood, one of Bangkok's oldest neighborhoods. And if you're a foodie and you love street art, street culture, this might be the perfect neighborhood for you. Chinatown centers around Yawarat Road, which dates back to the foundation of the city as one of Bangkok's oldest thoroughfares. Lined with neon lights and bustling day or night, this cultural hub is home to temples, restaurants, markets, and a variety of art spaces and galleries. You can check out the many beautiful temples in the area, including Wat Mang Khon, Wat Trimat, and the Guan Yim Shrine. The graffiti-laden alleys of Talat Noi will lead you over to the Warehouse 30 Art Gallery, where you can enjoy a more modern selection of artistic styles. And if you feel like exploring other areas of the city, you can hop on the MRT, or you can grab a river ferry and explore explore the many attractions along the Chow Praia. And for food, you'll find no shortage of options in Chinatown, day or night. This entire area is one large food labyrinth. At night, Yawarat Road comes to life as one of the most famous street food areas in the world. And Chinatown's own nearby Nana area comes to life with a variety of trendy and artistic bars. When it comes to accommodation, you can find five-star hotels for as little as 3,000 baht per night. Chinatown is one of the perfect locations to stay if you love food, you love street culture, but if you want to meet travelers, explore the city, explore the main tourist attractions here in Bangkok, you might want to stay at our next location, so let's go check it out. If you're looking to meet fellow travelers, explore the main tourist attractions, and enjoy a couple of epic nights of partying, you may prefer to stay at Khao San Road. Khao San Road is the backpacker mecca of Southeast Asia, a sleepy walking street by day that transforms into a world-famous party at night. Made famous by the movie The Beach with Leonardo DiCaprio, Khao San holds a special place in the history of the backpacker trail in Southeast Asia. I I stayed at Khao San Road when I first arrived in Bangkok, traveling solo back in 2015. This is one large open walking street lined with bars and restaurants, teeming with fellow travelers. And one of the unique characteristics of Khao San is simply how easy it is to meet new people, which can be ideal for backpackers and solo travelers. And like Tonbury, Khao San is also ideal for travelers on a tight budget. And Khao San is ideally located to walk around and explore the main tourist attractions in the city. Located in the Banglam Phu district, Khao San is about one kilometer north of the Grand Palace in the Old City. And you have plenty of tourist sites to check out in the immediate vicinity. This includes sites like Phra Sumen Fort, the Giant Swing, the National Museum, and Democracy Monument. Walking around here, we're at the famous Giant Swing here in the old city. We've got temples behind. We've got a nice fair over here. It's a nice walk. 
And if you want to explore a little bit further afield, you can take a river ferry at Pra Artit to access other main attractions. However, it's a little bit more difficult if you want to explore central Bangkok. The nearest metro station is MRT Sanam Chai, which is 2.5 kilometers away. So you'll definitely be a little bit more dependent on taxis or ride hailing apps if you want to travel into central Bangkok. For food, you'll find plenty of small restaurants and vendors in the area serving up relatively inexpensive Thai food. Khao San isn't exactly the culinary center of Bangkok, but you'll be able to sample plenty of different Thai dishes to fuel your adventures. But one thing that you should keep in mind about Khao San is that it really isn't very authentic. This is one big tourist site. That being said, for young travelers planning on a short stay in Bangkok, this can be an ideal location. It's simple, it's easy, and it's inexpensive. This is the recipe that made Khao San Road such a famous destination because it works. But if you're planning on staying for more than a couple of days, I'd recommend moving locations on day three or four in order to explore more of the city. I have one more place to show you before we call it quits for today. This is Rama 9. It's two stops away from Asok and Sukhumvit. The prices are significantly lower, the environment is very friendly, and you have many night markets in this neighborhood. So I thought I'd show you around and give you a more residential option if you're looking to save some money and have an authentic experience here in Bangkok. Most expats start out by living in areas like Asok and they eventually migrate a little bit further out to more authentic residential neighborhoods. You'll find plenty of hotels for under 1,000 baht per night. You'll also find plenty of authentic local food. If you're looking for some entertainment, you can check out the popular Jod Fair Night Market or RCA Alley, which is home to the largest nightclubs in Bangkok. And of course, all the action at Sukhumvit is a stone throw away. One of the main advantages to staying in a more local residential area is that you won't encounter all the hustles that exist in main tourist areas. It's a much more relaxed, genuine, and friendly environment. Let me know what you think. Did I help you to find a location? Do you have any other interesting areas that you'd recommend? And have you stayed in different areas? Let me know in the comments sections. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.